YouTube, GS Mouse Mario here, doing a brand new video for tutorials of GS. Today's tutorial, we're here on Adobe Premiere Pro, and we're going to be showing you how to create action overlays or call to actions or just video overlays to have little uh, messages for your audience to be aware about something. And this is basically these little lower thirds or upper thirds that you see, or sometimes when someone says you should like the video they have some type of graphic on screen that flows into the video then flows back out reminding you to like the video and I have several of these things on my videos for example whenever I make a reference to a previous video I have this graphic that flows into the video then goes back out and I can demonstrate this real quick if we just play it here as you can see it oh, it's a bit laggy it comes in and then about four or five seconds later it goes back out and that brings attention to this video uh, so that viewers know, hey, there's a card on screen. I should probably go in that area and click it, and then it goes back out. I also have a very similar thing for my uh, Patreon page up here. I also have a very similar thing for reminding you to like the video. As you can see, it comes in and comes back out. And I also do this for all my videos where I have a nameplate lower, lower third here. So we're going to show you how to create this and how to import it to uh, Premiere Pro and how to get it working so that you can have these animations that flows in and flows out and it's actually very easy to do. Now for one, what you need to do is get a good idea of what resolution you're working in in your video. If you're going to be uploading your video to 720p, if you are rendering your video to 720p, then you want to work on an image file in Photoshop at 720p. If you are working on a 1080p, you want to go 1080p. If you happen to have a screen resolution on your computer equal to the screen resolution of your sequence here for your video, then all you got to do is find a spot, go to full screen with control tilde key. The tilde key is a little squiggly line. Hold down control, hit tilde, and you can take a screenshot of your screen here with the print screen button. Now, why do you want to make a screenshot of your screen with the print screen button? Mainly because you want to use this screenshot as a template for your design so you can see where you want to place your graphics, which is basically what I've done in my Photoshop application here. What I did is I basically took a screenshot of an old tutorial I did, and then I basically thought, okay, where do I want my nameplate to come in? I want it to come at the bottom here, and I basically have a layer for each graphic here that I want to display on screen. As you can see, this is what I made recently uh, where I have all the different layers, a like one, here's my Patreon one, here's my card one, and here's my uh, nameplate. So all I gotta do then is whatever, when I wanna export, when I need to edit, when I, when I, need, when I need to edit it or change it or change something about it or uh, bring it into Premiere Pro, I can just save each layer as an individual image or you can also animate each of these individual elements in After Effects. You can save this as a PSD file, as a Photoshop file, where it saves all these layers, and then drag it into After Effects, and you can animate each of these elements here. And we actually have a video on how to do that on the channel, and this was our last video we did that I uploaded about After Effects. So I'll leave a link to that on screen right now, and the overlay you're seeing on screen right now is what I'll be showing you how to do in this video as well. So check that After Effects video out if you want to learn, if you want to learn how to animate an image with several elements and several layers from Photoshop. So like I said, what we want to do is uh, go up to basically start Photoshop blank new, go up to file, go to new, and then we want to go from clipboard. And the option should be right here from clipboard. You can click clipboard and you can click create. Then you can press control V to paste. Now paste your screenshot into the window here. Now we're not going to need this layer here, so and we're not going to need the background layer either. So they're just here for now to work with in making a design. Other than that, you can just hide them before you export. But say I wanted to create something that says subscribe now. Uh, what I'll do is I'll either find a box on Google or find a graphic on Google and I'll import it here or I'll just create one on my own, which I'm going to do right now. I want to create a box. I'm going to go ahead and grab my uh, rectangle tool here and say I want to make it pop up on the right side here. Uh, actually, so say I want to make my rectangle and my graphic come from the left corner here. I'm just going to go ahead and drag, make a little rectangle that I think is a good size. Now be aware the size that you design here in Photoshop will be the exact same size that people will see in the video. So you can downscale it if you want to do so, 
but you may want to design as close to the ratios as you want to see in your video. So I think this is a pretty good size here. We're going to go ahead and zoom in a bit. And you want to work on new layers always. So go to uh, layer, new, new layer, go and press OK. And from here on, we're just going to go ahead and get a color. You can also work with gradients and do all kinds of cool designs here. But we're just going to do a quick little simple gradient. Go with a, a lighter red here. And we're just going to do a little stroke like that. Uh, something like, uh, maybe we'll go down. So something like that, I just made a quick little gradient here. And then we're going to go ahead and grab our text tool. And if I wanted to write subscribe now, it's obviously in red. So we change the color up here, change it to white maybe. And make sure you highlight that and change it to white. There we go. And you can use a different font if you want. Obviously, you go to the top here, change your font. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and change the size, though, maybe to 72, 100, 100 is too big, 85. 85 looks, around, looks pretty good. So I have it right here. And as you'll see, this is our little button now. Now you can get as creative as you want with this, like I said. But the key thing to do is when you're done creating your design, you're going to hide everything except for your button. So the two layers we have here is what we want. And then we're going to go up to File, we're going to go to Save As, and usually you want to save in PNG format for computer graphics, so PNG is right here. We'll save this, save it on my desktop for now, and we'll just click Sub Box, and this saves it as a PNG. Then what we can do is jump back over to Premiere Pro here. We can go to our desktop, drag our graphic here into Premiere Pro. And now what you'll see is if we drag it over our video, make sure you drag it over a channel over your video. You'll see now it actually looks exactly the way it looked in Photoshop. Now, if you want to add some animation to this, you can do so. Otherwise, you can just let it play like this. You can, you can just let it play. Say at this point of the video, you want to make a mention of subscribing and you can put a graphic up saying subscribe now. That works just fine. You can leave it up for five seconds or 10 seconds, however long you want. Then it disappears again. But if you want to actually make some animations to it, you can click your little layer here, click your little uh, picture in this channel here, go up to effects, and you can play with the position of it. Now, if you want to make it slide in and slide out like I have, what we'll do is we'll go to the first keyframe of this graphic. The way to do that is just go uncheck everything here and make sure you work on the channel that has the graphics. So the channel that has it here is V2. We'll go like that. Then we'll press our up key, our up and down arrow key. We'll bring it to the start and end keyframes and key points of that graphic. So our graphic starts here in channel one and we want to start exactly like that. You can also just grab your uh, marker here and bring it to the exact beginning here. That's also a way to do it. And then we'll go to our position here. So we'll go and press a little stopwatch here. Here's where we want to make a change. We're going to go ahead and drag this off screen here so you don't see it. Just like that. And because we made a keyframe, at this point in time, your graphic will look like this. Then if we move ahead 15 frames, you can either move 15 frames ahead with your uh, right arrow key, or you can do the math, 24 plus 15 frames. If you're working on a 30 frame per second sequence, half of a second will be 15 frames. So you add 15, you can also just move your marker to 2503, which will be half a second here. We go back to our channel layer here. And then at this point in time, we want the graphic to have come in like that. If you don't know the exact number to make it position exactly the way it was, the default for 1920 by 1080 sequences is 960 by 540. So 960 will bring it back to the, to the way it was. And as you'll see when we play this, it comes in like that. So that's how you make it fly in. And the exact same technique is used to make it fly out. We'll go to the very end. We'll press the up arrow, the down arrow key to go to the end mark. And at this point in time, we'll go 15 frames back. Here's 15 frames back. And we'll make a keyframe here. If you want to make a keyframe with the same with, with the same value, click this little button here. That'll make a copy of the keyframe. And then we'll go to the very end. Here's the end mark. And we'll go ahead and bring this to the same value that this keyframe had. Or we can just move it off screen. That's how you make a very easy overlay. Like I said, with, with animation and with keying, it gets a bit more complicated. But you can very well just easily make it pop on screen and then pop off screen again. And the reason why I want to do this is because a lot of times, uh, audio 
is great and people can listen to you and they'll probably hear you say subscribe. But if you have visual backup, some people are visual more and they see a design that says subscribe now, or they see an overlay button that says like this video, it'll encourage them to like the video more, to subscribe to the video more. Or if you wanna emphasize your name and your role in the channel or in a company, or if you wanna emphasize something you're saying in a lower third, it's always great to have some visual backup. And this is a great way, an easy way to do it in Premiere Pro with combination of Photoshop or GIMP. If you want to design in GIMP or Paint, you can do that as well. But in Premiere Pro, the steps are pretty much the same. You drop it in, you put it on top of the video, and then you decide how long you want it to be. You can drag uh, the channel here, make it shorter or longer, and then you do any animation work you want to do. If you want to do animation work, and that's pretty much how you create call to action overlays for your videos. And that's pretty much the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and liked it. If you did, go ahead and leave a like on the video. Plenty of other tutorials on the channel. If you're interested in more tutorials on video editing, audio editing, image editing, I highly encourage you to subscribe. Plenty of other useful content on our channel. And if you want to donate a dollar to my Patreon page, you can do so as well. Click the card on the top right hand corner screen. We'll bring it to the page. I also have a vlogging channel, the gaming channel, advice channel, music channel. If you want to check those out, links in the description is on the end screen. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. As always, this is GSMAN Smart. I'll be back. Certainly think. Don't go anywhere.